And uh, how was the heat shield going to respond? And is it going to work through this, the heat of the reentry? We're not going to be able to do anything about it. Uh, and we've got to get through the entry. It's the only way to get home. We lost communications. There was a, what we call blackout due to the ionized atmosphere. The blackout should last three minutes. Hello, you know, Aquarius. Hello, Apollo 13, and no response. Two minutes now from time of drogue deployment. After four minutes still nothing but you just had to sit there and listen through all that static waiting for somebody to uh, to say houston safe. They landed right where they were supposed to land. It was awesome. It was a big, big celebration mission control. We were all very joyful and all very tired and there didn't seem to be anything else to say, you know. Any mission that you can bring your crew back home from is a success. Nine months later, okay. and we're free. Apollo 14 is racing to the moon. The commander is Alan Shepard, the first American in space. Their destination, Apollo 13's landing site, the Fra Moro Highlands. We're on the surface. Okay, we've had a good landing. Command smoke, but other than that, we're great safe right on the landing site. Scientists think this region could hold clues from the time the moon was just being formed. The astronauts bring a handcart to haul 90 pounds of rocks back to the LEM. And Alan Shepard even finds time to convert the rock sampler into a golf club. With the success of Apollo 14, NASA plans to expand its lunar explorations with a bold new series of missions. For the new missions, astronauts will spend more time on the lunar surface and bring back heavier payloads of moon rocks. We want to collect enough data so that we could analyze the moon and see what it's made of. What is the structure of the moon? Uh, is it like the Earth? Is it like an asteroid? Is it, you know, what's the structure of the moon? For more ambitious explorations, they'll have to cover a lot more territory. NASA develops a revolutionary vehicle. The lunar rover was a very, very creative effort. We knew we wanted a vehicle that could roll along 
on that very, what seemed like sandy kind of a surface. And it had to be operable by people in suits that were very, very stiff and without a whole lot of mobility. The Lunar Rover is a four-wheel drive two-seater. It has a top speed of eight miles per hour. A magnetic compass won't work on the moon. So a computer constantly plots a straight line back to the left. We had the car to broaden our exploration base. Before the car, we had no ability to walk more than three or 400 yards. But with the car, we could cover a radius of about five miles. Apollo 16, John Young, Charlie Duke, and Ken Mattingly blast off into the Florida sky. Young and Duke used the lunar rover to explore an area known as the Descartes Mountains. This is going to be a good day, Charlie. Ah, oh, spectacular. Just spectacular. And here we go. We had trained that John Young would be the driver and I would navigate. Dad, you are really bouncing. Is he on the ground at all? Well, I'd just see how fast the thing would go downhill, and it would do pretty good. We're doing uh, 10 clicks, Tony. That's 10 kilometers. Huh? He's got about two wheels on the ground. Okay, turn sharp. It was fun riding a rover, and it was a lot of fun. Bounced a lot. Oh, I believe it, Charlie. It's ready, John. Okay, we got that. Working from the rover, they collect a record 209 pounds of moon rocks. We could collect a lot more rocks, and we could see a lot of variety of rocks as we journeyed across this landing area that was selected for its geological significance. So it really revolutionized the lunar surface exploration. Boy, this is a beauty of this place. It's just absolutely incredible. Duke and Young drive the rover hard for nearly 17 miles over rugged terrain. Parked at the landing site, it documents Apollo 16 blasting off from the lunar surface. What a ride, what a ride. Apollo 17 targets another geologically rich area of the moon. But this will be Project Apollo's final lunar landing. Budget cuts forced NASA to scrub three more missions already scheduled. We were disappointed because they canceled 18, 19, and 20. We had the hardware. We had crews picked. And uh, all it was was operational uh, money. NASA wants the last moon mission to be their greatest. The landing site demands the first night launch of the giant Saturn V rocket. On board, Ron Evans is command module pilot. Harrison Schmidt is NASA's first scientist in space. And the commander of Apollo 17 is Gene Cernan, a veteran of Gemini 9 and Apollo 10. Apollo 17 was, uh, was a real goal of mine. I knew before we launched that Apollo 17 was going to be the last flight to the moon, and I knew I would I would be the guy to make the final steps on the moon. Roger, we're go for liftoff here, Capcom. More than half a million people come from all over the world to watch the final lunar launch. 